For those who don't know me, my name is Alex. I'm the host of the Great Outdoors channel. Today I have with me a scorpion species. This is the striped scorpion, or striped bark Anticipation. scorpion. Ooh. Yep, I feel that. It's allegedly reported that there's thousands of stings from this insect a year. However, the sting of this insect is not well documented. Symptoms of this sting range greatly. Now, there are some reported deaths, and I never recommend trying something like this at home. From paresthesia, also known as pins and needles, to muscle cramps, nausea, stomach cramps, localized swelling, as well as shooting pains and tingling, numbness, and in some instances, anaphylactic shock. So I never recommend attempting something like this. Now this species has several different active compounds in our venom. It is a neurotoxic venom. It does affect the nerves. So you may feel shooting pain throughout your nervous system. It can affect the mouth and the tongue. Now this is a small scorpion species at about two and a half inches long. They get up to around four inches long. It is the two striped scorpion and it can be easily identified by the two lateral stripes going all the way from its head to the base of its tail. I'm going to test the sting of the scorpion today to find out just how painful that actually is. I'm going to do my best to document the sting of this insect so we have more information on it because there just isn't enough information about this very common scorpion. Now the Latin name for this species is Centrioides vitatus and Centrioides vitatus sting has not been well documented. Okay, he's not happy about this. And I want to have proper placement so that way, oh, he's grappling onto the forceps. Now, these are the entomology forceps. They are rubber coated. Oh no, we're gonna have a problem here. I do not want him to go that direction. So, oh, maybe if I coax him like this, he'll crawl back upwards or onto this container again. We need to have proper placement in order to receive a sting. This should do for our purposes. The anticipation. Okay, I felt something already. There you go. Okay, there we go. He's inserted the stinger inside of my skin. Hopefully you can see that. Oh yeah, I feel the burn. Now, oh yeah. Okay. Stinger actually got somewhat stuck in my skin for a second there. And we're gonna do one more sting. So we can, oh yeah, okay. So, letting the bar dig in. Oh yeah, it's pretty deep. Oh, yep. I feel that. Okay. All right, so right now we've currently received three stings. This is gonna make four. Okay. All right, so that is four stings. All right, I'm gonna give that a minute and see what the effects of those stings actually are. This, once again, is the striped bark scorpion. Let's put the scorpion back in its capsule. Okay, the sting site is this area. So far, we're waiting for the effects of the first four stings I received. I do not know what the prolonged effects of this sting is going to be, but we're going to have to wait and see what the swelling is, as well as any potential nerve effect or anything. And I can tell you that the sting is progressively getting worse as we go. All right, right now it is 11.37. It's been about four minutes, I believe, since the sting was initially received. There are three very significant sting marks as well as a minor and maybe possibly even a secondary minor right here between the two main sting marks. I can tell you that I am seemingly developing some aridicaria, which is swelling or redness around that region where I was stung or envenomated. Um, this species right here um, is not, deadly in most cases however like i said never do something like this at home because 
you never know how your body will react to a species of venom. Now different species have different venom. The effects of each venom are different because the consistency and the composition of the venom is different. So we don't know how these venoms are going to affect me because I have to be stung or envenomated to fully understand what the effects of the venom are. So far I've had no severe reactions. I've never had to use any kind of um, antihistamines to combat a swelling or any kind of a histamine reaction. Pretty um, typical reactions I exhibit when I receive these stings. Yeah, and at this point I can see five good stings as well as their red carrier going all the way around the sting site. The pins and needles, it peaked out about a minute ago. Um, they're not as, they're not progressing to become worse than they were a minute ago. And I would say that they are not shooting pain to my nervous system like I had anticipated before the incident, but uh, which is good for me in my case. And like I said, you never know how your body will react to venom. So always avoid these creatures at all costs, but please preserve these creatures at all costs. And that is the purpose of me doing something like this, is to better understand these species, help take away some of the fear of the species. There's no reason that I need to come out here and have a crazy reaction to get views. I just want to shed the light on the creature that possibly may have been misrepresented. So that's the goal I am uh, seeking and hopefully y'all understand that. And uh, preservation of wildlife is key. And there's a lot of other great people out there in this industry and I want to give them a shout out. We're at about 12 minutes now and you can really see what the effects of those things are about five or possibly six injection sites, as well as some ariticaria around those sites. As you can see, I just received several stings, and yet I'm holding it fearless because I realized it was never his intention to do me any harm. So if you like this episode, please be sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel and we'll keep doing what we do. I'm Alex with The Great Outdoors. Today we found a bumblebee in the family of Bombus. Now there's 250 different species of bumblebees around the world. 